Hello, YouTube. So I don't have much time, and I want to get this out before my camera gets all wonky weird and my place is a mess because I'm trying to move out. It's pain in the ass. So, um, something's been on my mind, and I want to share it with my atheist, agnostic, secularist brothers and sisters out there. Can I get a non-amen? Hallelujah. Um, like many people who tend to be on the more progressive side socially of things, I support the legalization of like substances like marijuana and the decriminalization of all drugs, as in Portugal, they have decriminalized all drugs. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's that doesn't mean it's legal to buy and sell stuff like heroin and stuff. It just means it's not a criminal offense. Today they are treating drug issues as more of a public health issue. Okay, most people I know support this, but as someone who um, was in sobriety for 17 years and relapsed earlier this year and is now in sobriety again. Um, it, it, you know, and I'm getting, I'm talking, I'm getting some help with my depression and I'm talking to somebody on the state's dime. Um, cause I wouldn't be able to afford that kind of help on my own. The thing is, I went to a meeting for the first time in a long time earlier this week. I think it went Christmas Eve. And that it's the first meeting that I've been to since I sort of came to the realization that I'm an atheist. And from what I'm finding, you know, even though I live in a red state, I'm finding that there are more atheists around than I would think. But a lot of them, and you know, until I ask them some questions, a lot of them don't even realize they're atheists. Um, so I'm kind of more atheist than the people who are atheists around me. Um, I don't think I call myself a militant atheist, but I think some of these people might look at me and what I know about atheism, thanks to a lot of you, and I've got a, a good education here on YouTube, might think that I'm kind of, I mean, I have strong opinions about secularism and stuff like that. The meeting I went to was about going to any lengths. And going to any lengths to maintain your sobriety, to get sober, to stay sober, etc., and there was no attempt to mask the, and that includes um, belief in a higher power who we're just going to call God and refer to as if it's the Christian God, you know, because that's the society we live in. There was no effort to secularize the tone of the meeting at all. And it made me extremely uncomfortable. Now, when I was in my very, very early 20s, when I was wrestling with cocaine, I was probably like 20 or 21. I don't even know if I was old enough to drink yet. When I was wrestling with cocaine, when I hit rock bottom, I called out for help and ended up in a free state, um, state funded rehab where it was basically the kind of rehab where they send you either to that rehab or they send you to jail. I don't even know if they have many of those places around anymore because they're trying to cut all kinds of funding for all kinds of stuff. But, you know, it was being in, in, in the rehab, the little house, and then going to meetings. It was three meetings a day. And m my issue is that, you know, I have I have a problem with there not being a concretely secular way and secular means of talking about these things. Um, especially when these things and these rehabs are um, imposed by many people on many people by the state. <clears throat> 
So I'm doing some research now on trying to get, I'm, I'm trying to do some work on my addiction and I'm trying to research secular ways of understanding it and secular ways of going about it. Um, haven't exactly found a good secular substitute for it, um, AA, but I have gotten more into Buddhism, which ironically is also a religion, but it's not a, a, a religion that is about worshiping a deity. Um, and that seems to have, to be more comfortable to me as an atheist than the AA stuff. You know, and and the, I know this is all scattered and all over the place. I've got to leave soon. Um, you know, and in the big book, which is the book for Alcoholics Anonymous, there's a chapter to the agnostic, right? And basically it's like even if you don't believe or you don't know if there is a God, as long as you can agree with these three things, you can still work this program and there's one, you know, one and two are like, know that you're an, an addict and all that. And then the third one is, if you can say that you believe God could and would if he were. And I can't even say that I agree with that. I mean, I don't know why so many theists assume that whatever deity they think created them Get, cares, you know. In in my opinion, it seems more realistic that if a deity did exist, it's you know probably was passing through the universe and stopped off in the planet Earth to take a dump, and that's how we got here, you know. And cares about as much about us as you do when you leave a flush a dump down the toilet, you know. Why why do they always assume that this deity, you know, cares? It's, I don't know, but, so yeah, so I can't even say I'm on the same page with that. And this, this, this also strikes a chord with what me and the other sex workers rights advocates go on and on about that a lot of people just don't seem to get. And that is that the rescue industry tends to not be secular. So when they go to places like India intending to rescue, you know, uh, trafficked people who a lot of times are not, sometimes are, a lot of times are not trafficked. They're just sex workers and they, you know, riot to escape and they, you know, go through all kinds of means to escape. They don't want to be rescued. And in a country that is 70% Hindu, they don't want to be rescued by a Christian organization that then wants to put them, like Shared Hope International, in some place far removed where they're working in a leather factory sweatshop, cutting off, cutting up what was once what they believed to be their god. You know, cows are sacred in India. And it's it's the these marginalized people being rescued by these groups and then being almost almost forci forcibly not necessarily f forcibly like at the point of a gun but there's high pressure to convert there and my argument is that if we did ever which I don't think that we would in my lifetime come to a place where as a country we decriminalize all drugs, which I think we should. I think what that's going to do is open the door and for, um, you know, AA is really the go-to place for help for that. And it's not really a secular thing. And a lot of people find or become Christian or whatever again once they start going to AA because AA doesn't, make it a point to talk about things in a secular fashion. There's these little hints of God talk in there. So eventually as you begin to get well or you start to work your program and you get your sobriety more under control, you begin to make the connection through just even just that re being repeated, repeated, 
And even the last step, having had a spiritual awakening, yada, yada, yada. And I think that as a country, when dealing with addicts, we need to find more secular ways to deal with addiction. I think we need to weed out the God talk even more. Um, and, I mean, eventually this is going to start becoming the thing where the state is sending you to these places. That's not secularism. I don't, I don't care what people say. When you've got talk of a higher power and God as you understand it, and then, you know, all of that stuff, that's not secular. It's not. And the state shouldn't be using those means, in my opinion. I mean, isn't there, there needs to be a more scientific, less gaudy way of handling addiction. Especially if we're going to em embrace um, handling addiction as a public health issue in this country. Um, and I guess that's really all I have to say about it for now. I'm sure there's stuff I forgot, but I gotta go. Gotta go. Um, and I'm sure my camera's acting weird now. So, let me know your thoughts. Hmm. Yeah, let me know your thoughts. Thanks for watching.